A concept artist for video games create visual representations of an idea for a video game. Their tasks vary. It really depends on which production phase they are in and what needs to be designed. They draw or paint characters, graphics, environments, weapons, vehicles, or anything that needs some visual development. The initial concept can also have a flashback and another world. You say Stranger in a Strange Land. I think that's one of the core things that helps stayed in the project from the very beginning, the feeling of being lost somehow. At the beginning of production, a concept artist for video games does a lot of research and exploration. He or she is researching for the visual language of the world they are creating. This involves creating a lot of postcards, which is the final form of the concept art that you can see online. In later stages, he goes more into specific problem-oriented tasks. One of the processes that we use to design our types is a process that we call intrinsic ideation. And it's a process where we first of all look at where this thing has come from. Everything has to come from the world. They don't really have any ability to farm. So all of their survival is based on hunting. You have to be nomadic. You have to be on the move. They usually get a list of problems that need to be solved. At this point, they are creating the core concept art, which usually doesn't get shared online. Most of these drawings are ugly, but they are good for solving specific problems. Generally speaking, the concept artist for video games draws concepts of a variety of stuff like barrels, buildings, and equipment. Also pictures of the horizon of in-game locations. We have people here who take a very grounded approach. They really try to think about things in terms of function and what's the truth of the idea rather than just what would look cool. The quality of the style of the illustrations can vary from quick and rough to detailed and refined. Concept artists are often asked to gather references for the ideas they will be creating concept art based on and also based on the story. When a concept artist starts an illustration, they will often start with the composition and the general movement in the painting that they are trying to create. They often work on lighting, and some artists try to tackle light and composition at the same time, which is called two-value sketching. When it comes to colors and textures, the concept artist can use images when working on this aspect of their work, which makes things easier and faster because it is a good starting point. We can't have any real world references. We had to do all our own brands, our own superheroes, our own posters. So it's made for Captain Spirit. A concept artist can explore and try new things in the process of creating an illustration. They can engage their imagination to create abstract shapes to get to the character or the vehicle or the building, let's just say. This is actually good for visual and shape language exploration. They can go with three or four shapes, then they will try to combine all the aspects that they liked to get a better result. This will give a better sense of direction for going further, but some initial sketches make more sense than others. And the art and concept team had a huge role in developing the Banuk. They had really uh, done a lot of the work in terms of how the Banuk kind of would fit into the environment. Video games concept artists can also use basic 3D modeling as a solid starting point for digital painting over simple or partially constructed 3D environments. To do this, some invested concept artists or just concept artists for AAA projects usually travel to a specific location for gathering reference photos for a specific location to make sure that they get all the details they need. Unlike Earth-like tribes, we have robots roaming around. And these also dictate the belief systems, but also the resources. They take parts from the machines and try to almost dress like the machines. The environment constraints can make a lot of difference and will help guide the concept art process. The job of the concept artist working on a linear game can be very different compared to the one working on an open world video game, for example. What we're focusing now is on creating uh, really believable worlds that you can interact with. Giving life to that open world is still quite challenging, especially from a performance point of view. Also, the constraints can manifest in the form of game mechanics depending on the genre of the game. Also, weapons, vehicles, or anything else has constraints that can help the artist stay focused and not spin around in endless loops. So we want to tell the story through the places that you're visiting and do it through the, the artwork and the, the atmosphere of the, the areas that you're exploring. It's all handcrafted. We spend a lot of time talking about the tiny little details of why is this thing in the yard in the first place? Who put it here? Depending on the materials that the things are made out of, how they're placed, what's the purpose of this thing? 
We want to make all these details where it's actually a place that feels lived in and it feels alive. The story also has a big influence on how they do their job, because basically they are trying to visually represent the story to 3D character artists, game level designers and environment artists and so on. Then they try to make the illustrations as clear as possible to serve as a blueprint for 3D artists. Sometimes due to pressure, some things may get lost in the concept that needs to be explained. It's rare that you start out with like a finished drawing. It always starts with very faded kind of drawing without a whole lot of defined details. The main goal is to inform and give detailed art direction to the production art staff. But that can often mean more than just drawing characters or environments. I do love to collect a lot of uh, robot toys while enjoying them as a toys. I also like can get a really close look at like how the mechanical designs, like how the joints work, their shapes and form, and that kind of fuel back into my sense of like art and design. Some game development studios don't require their concept artists to do matte painting, but they sure use a lot of photos to speed up the process. 3D is an important part of the concept artist's job. It is very important for complicated 3D geometry and locations because drawing perspective is hard, so 3D can make this far easier. They can use a game engine or 3D software such as Max, Maya, or Blender to block out 3D models and environments. If we look at this, there's a lot of detail that's been sculpted into here. The original version of it was very flat. We went in and kind of banged it up, scratched it, and kind of told a story in the model. Put sword marks and chips and broken things that were, were implied in the original, but now that we have such high resolution, we can actually see it. Blocking out elements of the environment in 3D shortens the amount of time spent on drawing. Also, it allows them to have a better sense of scale, in addition to freedom to see the environment from all angles and to see if it is visually appealing or not. Once the blockout process is over, it's time for sketching or painting over it. Also, a good thing about concept artists is using 3D, which is better for communication with the level designers and environment artists. If the 3D concept art is good enough, level designers can use it as a starting point rather than starting from scratch because the sense of scale is there. Artists that are constantly trying to do the best work they can and improve it will inspire you. Being around passionate people just ignites you. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.